For this example, we have a system of equations with decimals. The easiest approach with decimals is to clear decimals first. So if you look at the coefficients in the top equation, 0.6 and 1.3, 0.6 is really 6 tenths and 1.3 is really 1 and 3 tenths. And so when we clear decimals, it's the same idea as clearing fractions. You locate the least common denominator, which is the denominator that all of the other ones will divide into. So for this example, it would be a 10. Let's say that you had a equation that had 0.6 in it, and then you had a coefficient also of 0.35. Well, 0.6 is 6 tenths, and 0.35 is 35 hundredths. In that case, your LCD would be 100. You go with the larger one. So in this first example, I'm going to multiply the top equation by 10. So you do all the way across and rewrite it. Multiplying by 10 adds a zero to the number and it moves the decimal one position to the right. So 10 times negative 0.6x is 6x and it's negative still and then 10 times 1.3y is 13y, and 10 times 8 is 80. In the second equation, notice that I have a 0.4 and a 0.7, so the LCD is also 10. Do the same thing to change your coefficients. So 10 times 2.4 is 24x, minus 10 times 0.7 is 7y, 10 times 4 is 40. Now I have a system of equations that have all whole number coefficients, so it's a little easier. Next I'm going to be searching for um, two letters that I can add together and cancel. So for instance, I'm looking for you know a positive 6x and a negative 6x, something like that where I can add it together and the opposites cancel out. Right now I don't have that, so I can actually try to change my coefficients to make the numbers match. If you look at the y's, you have a 13y and a 7y. There is no way to multiply 7 by anything to make it become a 13. So then look at the x's. You have a 6 and you have a 24. Well, if I multiply 6 by 4, I will get 24. So I'm going to do that. Also notice that it's a negative 6, which if I multiply by 4, I get negative 24. So I will get that opposite sign situation that I need. You have to have one positive and one negative. So let's multiply all the way across by 4 on top. So 4 times negative 6x is negative 24x. And then we have 4 times 13 is positive 52y. And 4 times 80 is 320. And then copy your second equation since you did not alter the coefficients. Now you can add your columns straight down. Negative 24x plus 24x is 0, so cancel that out. Positive 52 plus negative 7 equals positive 45y, mm -hmm. and 320 plus 40 is 360. Now divide both sides by 45 to get your solution for y. So 360 divided by 45 equals 8, and now we have our answer for y. Now we need to find the solution for x. You're going to plug in your answer for y of 8, and you can plug it into the equations that you changed. You pick one of them, or you can go back to the original and use one of those. I'm going to use the top equation, the first one. Negative 0.6x plus 1.3y equals 8, and I know y is 8. So negative 0.6x plus 1.3 times y, and that becomes 1.3 times 8 equals 8. Use your calculator here to simplify. So negative 0.6x plus 1.3 times 8 in my calculator is 10.4. I'm going to subtract 10.4 from both sides. So negative 0.6x equals 8 minus 10.4. That's negative 2.4. Divide by negative 0.6 to get your solution for x. So x is negative 2.4 divided by negative 0.6, and that's 4. So this tells me that these two equations, which are really lines, have a point where they intersect each other. 
And so the point of intersection is the solution. And so for here, the solution is the ordered pair 4, 8. You always do alphabetical order for your values. So anytime you have an equation, systems of equations with decimals in it, your approach should be to try to clear those decimals first.